in Lighthouse. Good morning, Beach Johnny 5.1, and good morning, YouTube family. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Oh, let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and do miracles, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit this morning.
carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it.
close to us. Oh, Jesus, we look to you. We praise you.
I think we got a better praise in us than that. Come on. Lift up. Good morning. Are you excited? I am excited, man. I'm so excited. So glad that you're here this morning. Come on, Lighthouse. Welcome all of our first-time guests. So thankful everybody's here with us on YouTube on Beach 95.1, out in the overflow. So glad you guys are here, man. Y'all can be seated this morning if you can. I am ready. Man, am I ready. So many great things going on, man. Are y'all excited? I know I am. Awesome. How many of you guys were here last Sunday morning? Last Sunday morning, cool. And, you know, it's Labor Day uh, weekend, and, I mean, we are at capacity, and it is so cool, man. It's just awesome. And it's, of course, COVID capacity, but that's all right. It's still capacity, all right. Hey, uh, we're on week number three of a series that we started in the book of Ephesians. If you have your Bible, I'm actually going to ask you to get it out and get ready because uh, we got some stuff for you this morning. I've got a a word here today that's uh, I'm believing God's going to change your life. And I know that I'm always ready for a word in season. How many of y'all are ready for a word in season this morning? Awesome. If y'all remember last week, we talked about uh, the the Holy Spirit as the seal of our inheritance. And I'm sorry, if you missed any of this, please just go over to our YouTube channel. It's all there ready for you so you can get caught up if you're coming into the series uh, a little bit late. We're on week number three of a series in the book of Ephesians. And it's, it's, it's going to be powerful, man. It's going to help you, and it's going to help me, and it's going to be good. So anyway, uh, this week we're going to continue talking about the work of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. And directly flowing from the verses that we read last week, Paul begins to pray for the church and that the church would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And that's exactly what I want to pray for this morning Dear Lord, we love you and we thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you to come now. Let the real preacher come. Let the real teacher come. Holy Spirit, you come because we know that without you, we have nothing. We need you today. We're going to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. But God, set our heart on fire today. Show us something new in your word and and do something incredible in the spirit today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, I see these next several verses uh, as Paul figuring out kind of what it looks like for people to be sealed by the Holy Spirit, when we're stamped by the Holy Spirit, when we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, it's like, what does that look like in our lives? You know, that that's really what Paul's praying about here. Even though Paul's praying these words, um, yeah, it's his it's his thought, it's what he wants to happen. But you got to remember they might be Paul's words, but it's not just Paul's desire, this is God's desire for his people that that uh, we would receive the wisdom of Uh, the spirit of uh, wisdom and revelation. So with that in mind, I want to go through the word here, and I want to start in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, and we're going to kind of roll through this this morning. Ephesians 1, 15, the Bible says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now, verse 17, I really want to key in right here. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Now, I want to pause right there for just a minute and explain something. That You you have to remember that when the Bible was originally written, it was not written with chapter and verse uh, divisions. Okay, it's a letter. Now, a more literal translation to this would not be a period at the end of verse 17, and then you go to verse 18, and you would start with a new thought. Actually, verse 17 would continue on, there would be a comma, and the thought would continue through verse 18. So let's let's read it like that, because when we pick up to verse 18, uh, the text actually provides an explanation of how the Spirit of wisdom and revelation might operate in our lives. So we want to learn that this morning. So I want to read it together. I'm going to start at verse 17 one more time, and we're going to kind of flow through it. I'm not going to put a period. I'm going to put a comma because it's a continued thought. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, might give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the richness of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who what? Believe. 
That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Verse 22, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. That's a lot, but it's good. Paul has already told us that we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. But now he starts to pray that the church would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and that we would understand that we were, we were to be continually having the goodness of God and the character of God revealed to us. How many of y'all want to know more about him? I want to be closer to him. Anybody want to be closer to the Lord? We need the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation because we need that knowledge to be revealed to us about God. You're going to see in a moment that Paul zeroes in on a few areas as examples of ways that the Holy Spirit would reveal himself to us. But the first thing I want to talk about is how the spirit of wisdom and revelation might actually work in our lives. How that would actually look in our, in, in our lives. I, I love the word and I love the revelation of the word. And we need the revelation of the word. But I also like to make things where we can all get it. Because I know a lot of you are newer to church. And I, I don't want to just talk about stuff. I want you to get what we're talking about. Amen? So, so just imagine, just go with me with this. Just imagine that we all went over here to the beach and we all uh, walk down to the, to, the, to the beach and we're looking out over the Gulf of Mexico. If you go down there and if I had a pair of binoculars, we could put on those binoculars and we could look out and we would see maybe some jet skis and maybe a few fishing boats and maybe kind of far off you might see a, a few ships out there or something. But if you put down the binoculars and you grabbed a telescope, I mean a good one, you know, not a cheap one, but a good one. And you put that telescope up to your eye and you looked out. Yeah, you would definitely see the jet skis. You would be able to see the fishing boats. And you would be able to read the name written on the ship that's out there. You'd be able to see the people walking on the deck of the ship way out there. It's almost like the telescope seems to have the power to make things appear out of nowhere. Please follow my parallel here. Whenever you have the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation flowing in your life, it's almost like things that you couldn't see before begin to appear out of nowhere. See, all of a sudden now, you know who to marry, you know where to go, you know what job to take, you know what job not to take, you know what house to buy and what house not to buy. Why? Because things you couldn't see before become visible to you. But why? Because you're, you have the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation flowing in your life. You know what to do. In situations where you didn't know what to do, you will then know what to do. Watch this. These examples are similar to how the spirit of wisdom and revelation will impact our lives. But wisdom and revelation, it will uncover what Jesus has done for us. And he'll awaken the eyes of our hearts, the Bible says, so that we can see and know and discern the things that are not typically within our reach. Things that were out of your reach before will become in your reach because of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the first example Paul gives here about the way the spirit of wisdom and revelation works, the first thing he really highlights is the hope to which he has called you. The hope to which he has called you. The first thing I want you to know this morning is that you have hope. I'm thankful that I'm living in the world with hope. I'm thankful that I don't have to live in a world just, you know what, squashed by fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and a sound mind. And I have the hope of the gospel and I have the hope of Jesus. And I don't have to just lay down and be all tore up and beat up all the time. No, why? Because I have hope. Paul highlights the hope to which he has called you. Now, you might just want to go ahead and underline that in verse 18 in your Bible if you want to. Because when you walk out of this building, you might need to remind yourself of that. Paul wants believers to know that God's call makes a radical change in what the future in their life holds. 
Whenever I accepted the call of God on my life, hey, you know what? It's changed my life. Whenever you accept the call of hope in your life, it will change not only your life, but it will change the way you see things. Remember, not my will, Father, but thine be done. God's call will make radical changes in your future. It will change the way that you see things. Our understanding of this hope, it will change the way you live. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, it, it'll change your thinking. Our thinking with hope, it'll bring us, it'll bring us peace when nobody else has it. It'll bring you answers whenever nobody else has them. See, our thinking with hope, by bringing us face to face with what God is doing in our lives every single day, that will encourage you. Anybody ever need any encouragement? Now, in just in a very, very small comparison to that, I'll tell you something that has changed the way that we interact with the world around us. How many of you are over 20 years old? <laughs> then you know what this is. Very, very, very small in comparison. But the smartphone has changed our life. How many of y'all remember life before smartphones? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, if you wanted to travel from Florida to New York back in the day, I'll just say back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, you had to go to this place called a gas station and buy what was called a paper map. How many of y'all remember that? And then you would, have to, you, would, you would get it the day before, hopefully, and you would set it out on the kitchen table, and you would unfold this big map on the table, and then you would have to begin to plot your course, and you might even have a highlighter, maybe, and you would highlight your course, and then you would be like, okay, the scale is, oh my goodness, it's one inch equals 100 miles, and you had to figure out how far and how long it was going to take you, and then if you were like me, you would figure out, you know, gas consumption, and how, you know, where am I going to have to stop to get gas, and the whole thing, it was a lot of work, y'all. It was a lot of work. But now, see, kids today, they don't know nothing about that. Because now they just say, drive home. You get lost, I don't care where you are, you tell your phone, drive home, and it'll, it'll route you to the house. Kids now, they can't get from, they can't get from Lighthouse to Pier Park because they never look up. <laughs> I see kids driving in circles in Walmart parking lot. They just don't know where to go. So you're a new driver. Yeah, I'm 16. I'm like, what, what's, what's wrong with you? Well, I've never looked around. I always look down at my phone. <laughs> hey, when we were kids, <laughs> you ever play the counting the cows game? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we were kids, you went someplace twice. You knew where every bit of it was because you didn't have nothing else to look at but the back of your parents' head, so you were looking out the window. <laughs> But the smartphone has changed the way we do things. It's like this. If I'm driving from here to Tampa and, and, and I'm running my GPS, my GPS will route me around a problem. It will. If I'm heading south, then you know what? And if there's a, there's a wreck on the freeway, my GPS will route me right around that problem so I can still get to my destination as fast and efficient as possible. Do you know what the Holy Spirit of God will do? If you'll begin to allow the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation to flow in your life, those problems that keep tripping you up over and over and over again in your life, He'll begin to route you around those problems because you're listening and looking for His direction in your life. I'm telling you, it's a small example, but I'm, I'm telling you that it's just, like the, the, it's just like your cell phone because, see, your cell phone is tied into a network that you cannot see. The Holy Spirit of God is a very powerful, actually the most powerful network in the world and in the universe that you can't see. You know, have you ever, let me ask you this, have you ever had the same problem over and over and over and over and over again? And you're like, why do I keep doing this over and over? Anybody? I'll wait for the rest of you. <laughs> That's right. So what happens? Now, we're praying this morning. See, I've been praying for you guys all week that, you know, what? just like Paul prayed for me, Paul's praying for you that our eyes of our heart will be open and that we would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why? So that, you know what, your marriage doesn't have to fall apart. Your kids don't have to go crazy. You don't have to keep going down that same road of addiction over and over again. No, you can receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and know how to route around the things that are going to trip you up. This little device has transformed how we experience the world around us. It has. 
It's transformed even our expectations in life. It has. I can, I can prove it. it. It's changed what you expect. Y'all, it's like this. I can take you to any city in America right now. If I have my cell phone and you get hungry, you say, I say, what do you want? I say, I want Mexican food. I want Chinese food. I want, I want, I don't care what you want. I, I say, hey, restaurants near me. And it will tell me what rest, not only will I know what's there, I will know what's available, but I'll know by the reviews that I can read if it's good or not. And I can even tell you how pricey it is. I can. See, I'm getting ready to go down to Tampa. And whenever I go down to Tampa, I love to eat at a place called Maggiano's Little Italy. Anybody ever been to Maggiano's Little Italy? <sighs> Have you ever had the fried zucchini? It's truth right there. That is the truth right there. <laughs> yeah. See, it changes what we expect. You can dial in and know exactly what it is that you want. You can figure it out on the way to where you're going. You don't have to stop and pull over and get out a map, go to a gas station and ask for a drink. No, 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 no. No, this thing right here, it'll tell you exactly which way to go. Exactly the same thing with the Holy Spirit of God. Exactly the same thing with the spirit of revelation and wisdom in your life. You don't have to pull over and stop. No, baby, you keep moving towards Jesus. You keep running towards the calling. You keep heading in the way of the, of the, that God has for your life. But along the way, man, route, route guidance will kick in. He'll say, no, 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 you don't need to go left over here. No, 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 you know, you got to pump the brakes just a little bit. Get over in the other lane because there's a problem over there that I want you to avoid. And we need to be able to hear that and know that so that we don't keep falling on our faces. Amen? <laughs> Revelation and wisdom, it'll change your life. Look, man, that's what the hope of our calling does. Paul tells us that the spirit of wisdom and revelation does the same thing with the hope of the calling we have in Jesus. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of your calling. You have hope this morning. See, when the eyes of your heart are opened, we experience the hope of our calling and it transforms the way that we interact with the world around us. Because of Jesus, we have a reason to look to our future with hope and expectation. I'm telling you, man, there's a whole lot of Christians out there living in a whole bunch of fear because of the season that we're in right now as a country and, and, and as a world. And people are terrified and people are afraid. But as Christ followers, we don't have to be. You can live as a people with hope, man. You can live with, as a people with boldness and, yes, of wisdom and as of, res, and of res, revelation. You don't have to just cower in fear and, and, and just no, don't want to get out of bed in the morning and, and lay and pull the covers back over your head, afraid to go out and embrace the day. No. No. God isn't giving you a spirit of fear, power of love and a sound mind. Because of Jesus, he's given you a future. He's given you a hope. And that's true. Whether you have eyes to see the possibilities or not, Jesus still did it. And you know, it changes your expectation. It just does. Whenever you know something is close, it's like this. When I grew up, I grew up in a little itty bitty town in the middle of nowhere. And we had this place up there called Tudor's Biscuit World. And it was a whole world of biscuits. And my family got sick of hearing about it. And I knew it was like a thousand miles from here. And one day, me and my wife were driving down 23rd Street looking for some place to have breakfast. And Julie picked up the phone. And she said, breakfast places near me. And she looked at me and she said, it says there's a Tudor's Biscuit World? 0.2 miles away, I almost wrecked the car. <laughs> and then I looked at her and I said, if you're joking, this is not funny. <laughs> but she loves God and would never do that to me. <laughs> and she said, no, I'm serious. And she turned the phone around and, and showed me. And I mean, immediately, illegal turn doesn't even begin. <laughs> if I cut you off, I'm sorry. I turned the car around. 
flew down the road and I pulled into the parking lot and sure enough they were building a restaurant and it said coming soon on the sign and I just sat and waited <laughs> and Julie's like I'm hungry I said me too but it's coming soon If something feels far away, it feels defeating. But when you find out what you really want is only 0.2 miles away, it changes your expectation. I pulled the car over, looked, turned around, drove there fast, boom! Within the speed limits, of course. Because our car is slow. And... I was thinking about it. My expectation completely changed. Far away, that your deliverance is far away, that your victory is far away. It changes things whenever you change your mindset and you say, you know what, man? You know what the Bible says? That who the Son has set free is free indeed. Therefore, I am free right now. It changes your ex expectation whenever you say, man, by His stripes, I am healed right now in the name of Jesus. It changes your expectation. And then you turn the car around from the way you used to think and you run to the, to the Father and you run to the Son and you say, I need it right now. I need it right now. God, I need you right now. Lord, I, I need your help right now. And I know you're close. You're not far from me. You're close. And I can expect you to show up in my situation right now. Why? Because you love me. And because you died for me and rose again in all authority and power so that I could have this new life. I don't have to just stay here and be depressed. I don't just have to stay here and be anxious. I don't have to just sit here and be defeated. I don't have to. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to change my expectation and I'm going to turn my heart and my mind to you because I need and I'm going to receive your spirit of wisdom and your spirit of revelation so that I know that I'm hearing from you and I'm following after you and I can be exactly who you've called me to be. Wisdom and revelation. It helps us to see the invitation that Jesus offers us and to understand how to get there. You see, our hope this morning is founded in Jesus and in His work in our lives. That's where our hope is founded. He works to place us back on the track of eternal destiny and purpose. And He promises to use every bump in the road, every problem that comes your way, to work together for the good, for those who are, love God and who are called according to His purposes. Some of y'all are like, man, my life, I got some bumps in there. Anybody had any bumps in the road in the last few years? So I've had some big bumps in the road. Man, God must not love me. Oh, no, 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 you're missing the point. He's going to use all that. He's going to use all of it. To help you to get where you need to be. Another thing the spirit of wisdom and revelation is revealing to us. Number two, if you're taking notes, is the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Everyone say holy people. If you're holy, say I'm holy. Some of you aren't sure. I can tell you, if you're in Christ, you're holy. You are a saint of God. That was week one. If you missed it, go back and check it out. You are holy. And some of you are like, you don't know me. I'm saying, are you in Christ? Then you're holy. Don't look at the person next to you like that. <laughs> can you hear the value that Paul is putting in this? Can you, can you hear the value that Paul is putting in the, in, the, in the spiritual family that we have? See, not only are they a blessing to us, but they're valuable to the Father. You are valuable. I am valuable. See, we are an inheritance to Him also. 
See, the way that this is translated is a little bit confusing because we spent two weeks and I was trying to explain to you guys in detail that you know what? You have an inheritance. You have a heavenly inheritance. Our inheritance ain't here. It's with the Lord. You know, we talked about that a lot. And, and, and it's true that we have, a, uh, uh, we, have, we have an inheritance in the Lord. But see, this phrase actually is referring to us as the Father's inheritance. Believe this or not, He loves you. He does. So the Father's inheritance is found in or consists of the people that God has set apart for himself. How do you know if you're set apart? Because you are born again. And he wants all. The Bible says that he wants none to perish but all to have everlasting life. He has chosen us all. He loves us all. He just wants us all to love him back. See, with wisdom and revelation, we too can uncover the wealth in our spiritual and earthly families. And, and, and look, man, wisdom and revelation gives us eyes to see the gold in one another and the insight to dig it out, to pull it out. I, I know some of y'all are like, man, why, why do you guys do, uh, why, why do y'all do freedom groups? Why do you do so many small groups? Why do you have so many services? Why do you guys do all that? Why do we have the new believers group? Why do we do that? Because we see the value in you. God sees the value in you. But it's not enough for us to see the value in you. We feel obligated to help. We see the gold in there. We want to help mine that gold and pull it out. We don't see you as you are today. We see you how God sees you. But man, down the road when you're living in victory, some of you are like, man, I'm all beat up. Look, man, stop looking where you're at. Look where you're going. You need to reroute your guidance a little bit. You need to get a better GPS, baby. You need to start listening to the wisdom and the power of God in your life and allow him to flow in there so that the gold that's in you can be mined. It's in there. I mean, my goodness, we see it everywhere. We, we see, I know I used Jorge and Cody and these guys always as examples, but it's true. Man, whenever they first walked in, those are pastors on staff, if you don't know that. They're pastors on staff now, but whenever they walked in, they didn't see themselves as anything. But man, we knew right then. See, some of y'all came in here, we know, we know what's in you. We know what's in you. And we're like, hey. How do we know? How do you know what's in me? How do you know? How do you know? The Spirit of God, man, there's gold in you. But we got, we got to mine it out. We got to pull it out. We're a spiritual family. And I'll tell you something else is happening right now. Yes, first service was slammed. Yes, second service is slammed. Yes, third service is going to be slammed. Do you know why? Because you know what? Everybody's like, man, due to COVID. Due to COVID, because of this, because of that problem, because of this problem, because of that issue. Listen, people are saying, well, I don't think people are going to be coming back to church no more. Oh, oh, I actually, I completely disagree with that. Because I think after about six months of sitting on the couch, worshiping by yourself, watching TV, I'm going to tell you right now, I think in about another month or two, we are not going to have enough overflows in place to be able to handle the amount of people who are coming back to church right now. Do you understand? Right now, y'all, statistically, this is one of the lowest attended services of the year. We're working right now. Our amazing dream teams have already set up. We have another overflow where we can put another, like, I don't know, 100 people right now. Because I told them, I said, get ready. Because people, I'm telling you, man, the isolation gets old. It gets old, and there's something about whenever we come together. I don't care if it's in an overflow room. I don't care if it's sitting outside in an overflow. I don't care if it's out in this lobby right here in an overflow. I don't care if you're in the building. When you worship together with God's people, it does something in you, baby, that you can't get on your own when you're sitting on the couch by yourself. It is never the same. People walk in the building, and they ain't been here in six months. They walk in, and they start like, whoa. I've missed that. I'm like, missed what? And they're like, man, the feeling I get when I, when I walk in the door. I said, yeah, it's powerful when the church body comes together and lifts up praise and honor and glory to God. Because then we come together in the spirit. You can't do it on your own. Nobody's an island unto themselves. And I understand, man, some people can't come out. That's cool. I'm not dogging you. I'm not saying you have to do anything. I'm telling you what's getting ready to happen I ain't asking I'm telling it's true and if you're a lighthouse and your dream team you're fixing to not even have a seat in here because if you already love us we love you you're gonna be over there this is gonna be for new people coming in 
Amen. <laughs> You're like, yeah, wait. <laughs> no, see, there's gold in you. We're going to pull it out. You're like, that ain't all you're pulling out. Hold on now. No, no, no. We're going to give you an opportunity to step up. How do you lead? You lead by being a servant. You say, well, you're in here. Okay, I'll preach out there. I don't care. Makes no difference to me. Makes no difference. I just want somebody to get saved. I just want somebody not only to get saved, I want you to live out your calling. I want you to understand, man. This great network we're connected to in the spirit. I want you to get it. I want you to get excited about it. I want you to grab a hold of this, this word in Ephesians and realize, man, this thing will absolutely change your life. How? By the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That the th I'm telling you, I'm telling you, something incredible happens when, and just, you know, just for example, if you're walking through your life and you're over, you know, 20 years old and you've made the same mistake 83,000 times and you finally get to the point of decision one more time and you always turn left and you always make this decision. Something powerful happens whenever that little thing inside you, which is huge, goes, wait a minute. Because you want to, because it's a habit. You go this way. And he's like, wait a minute turn the other way but I don't go I don't normally I always and he's like, just trust me and you do this and then you're not dealing with guilt and shame and you're like whoa and then you you're like whoa I just got a victory I never get a victory that was a victory I got a victory and you know what victory is it breeds victory you're like well if I can overcome that with the power of God then maybe I can overcome this and if I can overcome this, maybe I can overcome something else. And then maybe I have the hope that he's called me to do something great for the kingdom. To be the mother he's called me to be. The father he's called me. The husband, the wife. Man, whatever it is. The teenager. Praise God our teenagers need help. Have you seen them? <laughs> Kidding. Love you guys. <laughs> they just offended half the church. Oh, I'm sorry. This is on Beach 95.1. Half of Bay County. My bad. All right. Guest speakers are terrible. Moving on. <laughs> Proverbs 20 and 5, the Bible says, Proverbs 20 and 5, the Bible says, The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Our prayer should be, God, help us to see the value in one another and help us to draw the value out of one another and I'm gonna go ahead really bold and say this right here man that there's been an undercurrent of negative interaction in the church for so long I think man look and I'm talking about when I say the church I'm talking about the big church and I know there's a lot of people listening to me today but I, I man, instead of us splitting hairs over little differences I say if you're preaching Jesus and him crucified and rose again in the blood of Jesus then you know what I say we're on the same team baby let's love our community Community. Let's get this thing done, man. I don't care if you're loud. I don't care if you're quiet. I don't care if you're rocking out like we do or if you're singing from a hymn book. If you love Jesus, I love you. We are family. It's what we do. But there's been an undercurrent for so long. Oh, you go to that church? Mm hmm. Now, I got to draw a line and then snake handling folk because that freaks me out, all right? I ain't holding no snake. I got faith, but I'm not, you know, no. I still love you, but I love you from the parking lot. <laughs> Am I the only one that's ever sensed that? Not the snake thing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever sensed, like, oh, you go to Lighthouse? Isn't that a non denominational church? Yeah, it is. Mm hmm. Oh, 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 you go here, you go there. Mm -hmm. We are a part of the big C, the big church, who is to be under a, the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen? See, we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to give us eyes to see the gold in each other and to the insight to pull it out. If we will allow it, 
the Holy Spirit of God will point out what God is doing in others around us. And it makes life in the church family, man, a beautiful thing. Until you've walked through people like we do all the time, walk through situations with people and they're bound up and they get free or they're, they're, you know, their, their thinking changes and you see God renewing their mind by the word of God and you see where they were defeated and now, man, they're walking around saying, I got victory. You know, until you walk through that, whenever you get to walk through that with somebody, it's beautiful. It's incredible. It's powerful. It's life-changing. It's addictive in a good way. Pastor Stephen Fay, man, they've got a group in their home right now with about a dozen people. And, man, it's like, it's like the, you know, I have no idea the situations that the people are, are, are in right now who are coming into that group. But I know, because I know them, they're going to get in there and they're going to dig out that gold. And these people are going to walk out in freedom. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, you start seeing that happen in a church, that's when you run out of places to put people. Wouldn't it be amazing if we all actually did it? One more thing that Paul's given us as an example of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I love this one. It's God's incomparably. I've been saying that word all week. Incomparably. Do you ever use that word? I don't. I've been saying it all. Incomparably. God's incomparably great power. Nothing can compare. If you don't get any other revelation, we're going to get that one. Nothing can compare to the power of God. Nothing. Nothing. Paul desires that believers will know that this great power is available to you. It's available. What power? The incomparably great power of God. It's available to you. It's available to me. You know, the focus is on God's life-giving power that is specifically available to us believers. It's there. It's available. Jesus has been exalted, the Bible says, in all power. And Paul pretty much spends the rest of this letter talking about why that matters to us and, and what it means for us. And we're going to be talking a lot about it. Over in Colossians 2.12, I want you to see this really quick. The Bible says, we have been buried and raised with Jesus by the power of God. Over here, 2 Timothy 1.10. I know I'm going fast, but I have to. 2 Timothy 1.10, the Bible says, The power of Jesus' resurrection destroyed death and brought to light the life of Jesus, lived by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is in us who? There's that word believe again. Are you seeing the pattern? But here's the thing. In order for us to partner with what's been given, in order for us to partner with the Holy Spirit, then we must have our spiritual senses trained. Your spiritual senses have to be trained. Remember, we read earlier that Paul prayed that the eyes of our heart would be open. And some of you are like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about because my heart doesn't have eyes. It absolutely does. Your heart has eyes, your heart has ears, and your heart has touch. Here's what I mean. Look, look, look. You can feel with your heart, you can hear in your heart, and you can see whenever the eyes of your heart have been opened. See, now look, this is not about me. This is about him, but I want to say it this way. Look, look, uh, I hear from the Lord. Are you saying you hear voices? Yes. And I answer them. Absolutely. Because I hear in the Spirit of God. Now watch this. A couple of Sundays ago, we're having service, just normal, praise and worship, everything is cool. And, and, and the Lord spoke to me then during the service that somebody's liver had holes in it and that it was going to be, and, and I saw it. I actually saw it heal up. And I was like, wow, that was cool. The holes just went away. I didn't know who it was for. It didn't matter to me because it's not about me. It's about him. I got up, I'm preaching, and I remembered, oh yeah, somebody's uh, liver got healed. And I just said while I was preaching, oh, by the way, you came in today, you had holes in your liver, and that hole, those holes went away. I saw you got healed it was awesome praise God and we went on and I kept preaching didn't say anything more about it didn't know that it was Kaylee Pickett Kaylee had gone in a couple of days earlier had been in the hospital and they had checked and saw and they found that she had holes in her liver I hope that's where liver is I don't know <laughs> hole in 
liver. <laughs> there was liver holes. I don't know. And, and, and then she went back like the Tuesday after the Sunday morning church service. And the doctors went in, verified again to look to see the holes that they had saw a week earlier. And whenever they went in to look, the holes were completely gone. And then the doctor said, what's your secret? And she said, God. Okay. <laughs> Listen, that is a miracle. That is incredible. Some of you are like, yeah, right. I don't care if you, yeah, right. It makes no difference to me what you think about it. I know what happened. I know what he said. I heard him say it. I heard him say it, but here's where we mess up because we want to make it about the person saying it and not the one who said it. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with him. And then you know what, man? Now for the rest of her life, she will tell people, hey, what happened to you? She's not going to say, Pastor Cole prophesied. No, she's going to say, God healed me. I have a new liver. My liver's been restored, and I'm healed by the power of Jesus. And then what's that going to do? That's going to give them hope to believe for healing themselves. That's the God I serve, man. See, your heart has eyes. It does. But your spiritual senses have to be trained. It has to be trained so that you can learn to receive and to see all that God has done for us and is doing in us and doing through us and doing around us. Wisdom and revelation open our eyes to God's power at work in us. Man, notice in verse 17, he says that, the point of wisdom and revelation, and I love this, is to know him better. That's the point, to know him better. Verse 17, I want to read it to you. The Bible says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Look at the next line. So that you may know him better. Wisdom and revelation are not so that we can show off how much we've memorized about the Bible or how much we've memorized about God or how much we've... Me no, no, no. No, man. Wisdom and revelation are the fruit of a consistent relationship with Him. Notice I said consistent. It's not on again, off again. It's not like that. Wisdom and revelation are the fruit of a consistent relationship with the Lord. I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and stand with me this morning. Philippians 2.13. The Bible says, It is God in us, the Holy Spirit, that produces both the desire and the ability to do what pleases Him. Think about that. It is God in us, the Holy Spirit, that produces both the desire and ability. Desire and what? Desire and what? To do what pleases you? Him. Desire and ability. Now, you don't have to answer this out loud. But have you ever struggled with the desire to want to do what's right in the eyes of God? It got quiet, didn't it? You ever struggled with the desire to even just even want to praise or worship or anything? Yeah. Well, how do you change that? It's God in us, the Holy Spirit, that produces both the desire and ability. He gives you those spiritual gifts. He gives you strength where you're weak. He gives you, he gives you confidence when you're, when you're, when you're scared. I mean, he, 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 he does those things. He gives you comfort when you need it. Wisdom and revelation from the Spirit, watch this now, don't miss this, implant truth 
in our hearts so that truth gives birth to the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. It's by the Spirit that the truth is implanted in our hearts. And then that seed that's planted in our hearts, that thing right there, that truth gives birth to the fruit of the Spirit in our life. And the fruit of the Spirit, you know, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. How does that happen? It happens because the Holy Spirit of God deposits that truth in our hearts. This happens, first of all, whenever you believe in Jesus. You must be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? It means, okay, it's like this. I'm not asking you if you've been to church. If you want these things that I preached about today to happen in your life, then you have to make a decision. You have to let him in. You have to let Jesus in. You have to. And then if you're here and you're already born again, if you're watching on YouTube and you're already born again, if you're out in one of the overflows and you're already born again, I'm glad that you're born again. But now we've got to pray that the eyes of our heart would be opened. We need them open. So we're not going through life blind. But we're connected to that network I was talking about before that will help you to get from where you are to where you need to be. And he'll provide everything you need along the way. But you have to be on the right route, man. Or you're going to miss out. I don't want you to miss out. This morning, I don't care if you're in this building. I don't care if you're listening on the radio. I don't care if you're watching me on YouTube or if you're in one of the overflows this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. If today, you know right now that you need to pray and ask Jesus to come in and be your Lord and your Savior, right now we're going to pray for that. If that's you, no one looking around, nobody's business. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just lift a hand real quick. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll wait just one more second. Say, that is me. Over here, God bless you. Thank you. Outside, God bless you. In the overflow, awesome. God bless you. Praise God. Now, prayer number two. How many of you guys want the eyes of your heart to be opened? <laughs> if you do, lift those hands. Let's pray. Let's just all pray together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord, Lord of all, Lord of everything. I need you. I repent. Please forgive me. I'm a mess. I need you. Help me, Lord. Please come now. Holy Spirit, open the eyes of my heart. Help me to see. Help me to follow. Help me to hear. And help me to know how to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, come on, give the Lord some praise and welcome Pastor Stephanie to the stage this morning. Amen. Good morning. You thankful for a good word this morning? I am. Amen. Okay, if you just got saved, if you raised your hand and you prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, I want to encourage you first to text the word SAVE to the number on the screen behind me, but also to join our class called Alpha. It happens every third service down at Gymnastics Plus. You can walk in the doors down there and say, I just got saved or I'm newly saved and I want to know about this thing called Jesus, this thing, this thing, he's not a thing, this person called Jesus and this thing called Christianity and what it means to be a Christ follower. So join or you can sign up online, contact the leaders and start next week. You can jump in that class at any point. It'll answer all the hard questions that you're thinking right now in your head. So please do that. Um, also, if we are still in prayer, of course, for our brothers and sisters in Louisiana, lots of people have asked, if we, are we partnering? What are we doing? Listen, we are continually always partnering with Operation Blessing, who were here on our property during Hurricane Michael. So they know us. They know Lighthouse Church. We're going to ask that you go to ob.org. 
and sign up to help through them. You can give there and you can sign up to help there. They are having lodging issues, obviously, because of all the flooding, so they just need day laborers. We're kind of far away from that, unless you just like to drive. Then you can go over there and drive home if you want to. But we are asking that you just contact them directly because their needs, as we know, change every day. So that's what we are doing. Go to ob.org and, and give and see what they need and send it. Amen? Okay, if you're new, if this is your first time here today, Pastor Cole would love to meet you. He's going to be up here um, to say hi, answer any questions you have. You can also please text the word new to the number on the screen. We want to get you connected. We want you to be a part of our family. If you need church updates, text the word loop to the number on the screen. You'll get all of those. And like I always tell you, please read them. Don't answer back what I already answered in a text message or I'm going to personally call you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then, of course, if you need prayer for anything, Please text the word pray. Our prayer teams want to call you this week, pray with you, agree with you, and, um, and just connect. Other than that, please thank you for being generous in your giving. Continue to be generous in your giving, and God will, will bless you and honor you for that. I promise. I wish I had I have stories to tell you. If you doubt giving, please come talk to me. It works. I, I have proof. Um, other than that, the easiest way to give is to text give to the number on the screen. Otherwise, there's buckets and kiosk and all those things. Um, but it's super easy. Don't be afraid of technology. I can help you. It's really simple. I promise. Don't be afraid of it. Um, other than that, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for a great word today. Um, Lord, we pray for those in Louisiana who are still just hurting and, and, and lost. And Lord, we ask that you just have your hand upon them and upon their lives. Lord, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation as we move throughout our week this week. Reveal things to us in new ways as we open our senses to you. And Jesus, bless them as they give. Honor their giving, God, as I know that you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great weekend.